the Dauntless. Gentlemen, I'm glad you could arrive on such short notice, Admiral Cistern says as the two members of the Nerd Squad enter his office and snap off a pair of salutes. Both men are smiling widely and likely will require blunt force trauma or large doses of tranquilizers to get them to stop. While I'm always pleased to hear that you have successfully researched and put new pieces of information into practical use, immediately getting a report of two of my men having a life and death battle in a public park puts a damper on it. Sir, we were completely safe the entire time. It was well tested and just a bit of harmless fun. One of the two nerd states, Sergeant Finley, Sergeant Stone, Appearing on the local news as you wage a one-man war against each other with plasma swords is not harmless fun, Admiral Cistern remarks coolly. It is now, sir. As our report claimed, the Axiom brands are ready for use in the field. This was our last test after our last test. Stone remarks and Admiral Cistern raises an eyebrow before pressing a button. A screen reveals itself in his desk and it begins to show a sweeping camera view of both Axiom researchers facing each other while wearing large robes as opposed to their current uniforms. The video abruptly pauses, letting all three men see the beautifully maintained park with a river running through the middle of it that they're having this bit of madness in. Why the robes? Admiral Cistern asks as both men take dramatic stances and unveil a plasma sword from within the folds. Drama aside, it's a large amount of effort to stitch up those robes in short order. Actually, sir, it's not. I've been working on a technique called recombination to rapidly put things together provided you already have the materials. It's distinct from transmutation and much easier, even easier than disintegration, in fact, as well as very practical. It took five minutes and a basket of thrown-out second-hand clothing, Sergeant Finley explains, and Admiral Cistern's eyes widen at the implications. That will be quite useful. How close is it to being taught en masse? Admiral Cistern asks, after the potential for nearly flawless recycling capabilities. Several weeks? There's a lot more testing beyond basic textiles and metals, which is where I'm at with it, Finley explains, and... Admiral Cistern nods before allowing the recording to continue. The blazing white blades of the plasma are held out and both opponents begin pacing. Then the past Sergeant Stone rushes Sergeant Finley and takes a massive swing at him. Finley dodges backwards in a blur before rushing forwards with his burning blade a streak in the air that crashes with the sound of a burst of lightning as it's caught by Stone's own blade. Finley using his larger size to push back on Stone forces him to back up a few steps. Then Stone's blade deactivates and he melts to the side even as the sword comes back online. Finley dodges, mostly. His sleeve is caught and both cut and burnt off in the blow. Your first success, also your last. Finley in the past, states an Admiral Cistern raises an eyebrow at the line delivery. Finley has the decency to look somewhat ashamed of himself. Back with the battle, Finley charges Stone before abruptly shifting to the side and taking a controlled swing with both hands on his sword. The attack is woven around by Stone, who closes in only to find Finley reverse the momentum and has to parry the next attack. He steps into Finley's space and knocks the man over. Unfortunately, the wily nerd makes use of the fact their legs are tangled to take a quick swing as his opponent and shear off a sleeve himself. He then rolls away and stands up with a grin. Stone takes a defensive stance with his sword deactivated and held as if he'd just plucked it off his belt. His knees are bent and he's leaning forward as if to charge. You know I could go around and you'd have little answer, right? Finley asks and Stone snorts. Will you refuse the challenge? Stone asks, and Finley takes a long stance with the blade held close to his side and pointing right at Stone. Hell no! Finley remarks before seemingly vanishing to reappear behind Stone, who suddenly changed his posture with his sword fully activated and held pointing to the side as if he just took a swing. 
Both of them have their left sleeve fall down their arm. The cloth is tossed to the side as both men are revealed to have a wrapping of bandages around their shoulders. Couldn't resist going for the left arm either? Stone asks in an amused tone as he slowly turns to face Finley. Nope. Remember the agreement? Finley asks with a grin. I know, I know, Stone returns. But you have no idea just how out of your league you are. Taunt delivered Stone rushes Finley in a tight stance with the blade held close. The initial light swing is dodged, but that just opens up enough space for Stone to give Finley a baseball-style swing that sends the man staggering back a few steps. On his final step, he takes a strong stance and holds out his sword between the two of them. Finley is on the defensive. He takes one step after another toward Stone, who begins going sideways to get around his one-directional defense. Then Finley rushes hard and takes a blurring swing at Stone, who barely avoids catching the plasma sword in the face. Admiral Cistern pauses the video at this point and looks at both men evenly. It's clear you both survived, but what on earth made you think it was a good idea to batter each other with highly lethal weapons in public? The disinformation campaign, sir. The order was never rescinded. So we figured that with our project complete, we might send out a bit of bullshit that would hopefully make some aliens a little more hesitant to fire at us with their conventional arms. Make them think we use kinetics because we're even more plasma resistant than Canadors. Finley explains, and Admiral Sister nods. While not, hmm, it's not a bad idea. Not entirely, but it's one with a high chance of backfiring. If they get it into their heads that we're somehow plasma or laser immune, then they may very well just get creative, which would be a very bad thing. We may effectively be in an arms race, but I'd rather our opponents remain ignorant of that fact. Admiral Cistern remarks before considering, at the very least you two kept those bandages on. Letting the galaxy see exactly what you two have developed would be a disaster. Sir, please remember that we could have gotten up to these shenanigans in the Dauntless itself, and while we've rendered ourselves nigh invulnerable to plasma, the ship itself. Sergeant Finley trails off, and Admiral Cistern suppresses a wince at that mental image. Those swords were just long enough to get to something important in the ceiling and floor and would be a gigantic hassle to repair in the walls. You did not have to have a sword fight at all. I appreciate that many of you are going stir crazy, but there are limits to poor behavior. Admiral Cistern remarks gently. Both of these men were in one of the final brackets for actually leaving the ship and it showed. Their shore leave had had the unfortunate timing of being less than a day after they made the final breakthroughs on their project and undoubtedly wanted to play with it. But sir, lightsabers, laser zords, plasma blades, whatever you want to call them, they're just so cool. The order is that without proper protection, there's no plasma blade duels and we got proper protection now. Sergeant Stone protests and Admiral Cistern raises an eyebrow. He simply plays the video again instead of answering and the image of Sergeant Stone and Finlay catching one another in a blade lock with their weapons and wrestling for control before a confused bumble of movement causes both men to have their upper robes seared open with the swords to reveal them unharmed underneath. The image is paused again and Admiral Cistern rubs the bridge of his nose. Did you two men just tackle each other while massively deadly weapons were between you? He asks. Haven't you seen the movie before? Stone asks. I didn't have the idiots responsible in front of me to ask these questions last time. Admiral Cistern volleys back instantly. Now answer the question. Sir, we did. What is the problem? It's not that you're fighting with incredibly deadly equipment. You're soldiers. You're expected to do such but fighting in so sloppy a manner is not excusable. Admiral Cistern states, and there's a pause from the two men. You're not angry with us? I am, but it's an anger born of exasperation. No one was hurt despite the madness. There was no public or private damage excepting your robes and the sheer amount of confusion you two have caused. 
He explains before turning the video back on, before either man can ask him any questions. Their upper robes reduced to scraps, both men back off and allow the rags to fall around their waists before shifting their grips on the swords. Finley holds his sword in reverse grip while Stone takes a wide stance with his hand near the tip of the blade as if he's about to stab his own hand with it. A dangerous stance if the madman hadn't rendered himself invulnerable to harm from the weapon. Then Finley charges Stone who catches the sword and uses his prepared hand to grab his opponent and hurl him away. Clearly the throw was axiom enhanced as the man lands on the far bank of the river. Stone slowly paces up to him and Finley steps down into the river itself. What are you up to? Past Stone asks and Finley cuts his plasma sword into the water, causing a massive blast of steam to overtake the area. The video is reduced to barely visible silhouettes, waving glowing blades of light at each other and the occasional sound of flesh hitting flesh as they take cheap shots at each other. Then there's the sound of a siren and a demand to deactivate the weapon sounds out. The men comply and as the steam blows away, they're revealed to have carved away the lower robes and are reduced to their underpants and the bandages around their left shoulders. The men's genitals are clearly visible through the white fabric and the video is turned off. When I have to hear jokes about public indecency not being applicable because the arresting officers find your appearances decent, I have to draw a line. I want you both to understand that if the galaxy was not utterly insane, you'd be on latrine duty for the rest of your careers. As it stands, you're on latrine duty for a month instead. Do we have an understanding, gentlemen? Admiral Cistern asks, and both sergeants nod. Excellent. Now I'm not going to demote you or rescind your research privileges as this event has also shown the incredible use of your research. Now, your report stated, that you have finished the branding research and had successfully proofed yourselves against laser, plasma, electrical, thermal, and atmospheric-based harm. I would like to see the brands in question. He states, and both men roll up their sleeves to reveal identical burn scars. They're vaguely shaped like a segmented U in four parts with a T in the middle. Does it stand for the undaunted? Admiral Cistern asks after a moment. Sir, yes, sir. They answer him and there's a slight swelling of pride that he crushes down. It doesn't matter how much he actually likes his soldiers, a light hand invites lax behavior. Walk me through it, gentlemen. To what extent have these brandings been tested? I've read the report, but I prefer to hear it from your mouths. Sir, we branded numerous lab rats and successfully granted individual rats nigh immunity to plasma and laser weaponry. We extended it to thermal and electrical, but ran into an unusual problem in that many rats kept dying despite not being so much as singed by the plasma or lasers. We could hold a blowtorch to these animals and they wouldn't even notice the heat, but they'd still die. It baffled us for a long time. What was killing them? Asphyxiation, sir. A weakness to being immune to damage from heat is that you still need to breathe. And plasma and lasers are both hot enough to effectively burn the air, meaning you suffocate if you're under constant bombardment. The chances of such an attack being used are extremely slim. Yes, sir. However, we figured the best way to do this would be to cover all our bases. Hence the T we added. It's the most complicated of the brands in that it keeps a tiny film of atmosphere around the lungs. It won't stop decompression. In fact, it will likely hurt you more. We're not sure exactly how bad it will be. But with these brands, we're also able to breathe underwater. We can still smell and such as the change is in the lungs, but it always comes in as clean and dry. Have you tested these full lung brands on rats and decompression? Pop, Stone says. On the upside, they can be effectively be drowned with no ill effect. Finley remarks. Please tell me that you've already terminated these super rats, Admiral Cistern asks, and both men nod. We're not stupid, sir, Stone remarks. Debatable. I'll go over your report again with a fine tooth comb. 
How long until these brands can be used en masse? It's going to be rare, sir. The axiom burns through numbing effects and anesthetics of any kind. No matter what, it hurts. It hurts badly, and I cannot in good consciousness endorse it being made mandatory in any capacity. Sergeant Stone states, and Admiral Cistern's eyes narrow before he turns his gaze to Sergeant Finley. I'm beside Sergeant Stone, sir. The branding process is effectively torture. I cannot condone it being made mandatory. Sergeant Finley says, and Admiral Cistern looks from one to another before nodding. Good. I want this process available, but we'll be asking for volunteers only, Admiral Cistern says, and both men nod. Incidentally, I've provided your contact information to the Vivalar Preservation Spire Precinct Headquarters. Your arresting officers and their co-workers would like to speak with you. However, they've been informed that you will not be available until you've finished your tour of latrine duty. Sir, if we've done so well and caused so little harm, why the latrine duty? Because you two allowed yourselves to be arrested. Next time you go out and do something like this, ensure you have plasma-resistant pants as well. T-shirt too, if you could be so bothered, Admiral Cistern says and receives a pair of salutes. Dismissed. The two men march out of the room, and after the door is closed, Admiral Cistern allows himself a few chuckles at the goofy incident. It's not wise to let the men know that you find the crazy things they do almost as amusing as they do. He then begins to reread the report the men had made about their branding research and development. The five-part brand they have now is interesting, but could it be extended into other directions as well?